Gary Dwayne Payton, also known as the glove for his ability to cover his opponents. According to basketball legend and Hall of Famer Gail Goodrich, Payton is probably the most complete guard the league has ever seen. Gary was drafted in 1990 with a second overall pick by the Seattle Supersonics. It was there that he built his legendary legacy. Unfortunately, he isn't often remembered and honored as often as he should be, and a lot of this has to do with the fact that his greatest days were with an organization that no longer exists. I mean, it kind of does. I understand that the Oklahoma City Thunder used to be the Seattle Supersonics, but the reality is they now play in a different city with a new fan base under a different name. His legacy just isn't going to be reflected upon as much as it would have been if the organization was still in Seattle. Regardless, today we're taking a moment to reflect on one of the greats of the game and answer the question of just how good was Gary Payton really. Let's start from the beginning. Payton had expectations upon entering the NBA, but he was a bit of a late bloomer. In his rookie campaign, he played 27 minutes a game and averaged just 7.2 points, 6.4 assists, and 3 rebounds on 45% shooting. The following year, his numbers were roughly the same while just slightly increasing his scoring to about 9 points a game. It wasn't until he was 25 years old and entering his fourth year in the league that Peyton began to break out as an elite player both offensively and defensively. With Peyton coming into his own, alongside of the 6'10 slashing power forward Sean Kemp, the Sonics soon became an elite basketball team. Before Blake Griffin and Chris Paul were being called Lob City for the Los Angeles Clippers, that's a title that could have belonged to the Peyton and Kemp Seattle Supersonics, with Kemp often being on the receiving end of some exciting lob passes from Peyton. Not only was this group an exciting fast break team under Peyton's lead, but they were also incredibly sound and elite defensively. With this formula, the Sonics went deep into the playoffs several times, like in 1993 when they came just short of the NBA Finals, losing to Charles Barkley's Phoenix Suns in Game 7 of the West Finals. Their best team, though, was easily the 95-96 Supersonics, who were the second best team defensively that season and finished with a 64-18 record through the regular season. The only thing wrong with this group was their timing because the 95-96 Bulls were on their 72-10 season and are still often considered the greatest team of all time. Remember I said the Sonics were the second best team defensively in 96? Well, they were only behind the 72-10 Bulls that season. Regardless of the fact that they were facing the greatest team of all time in the finals, they still put up a fantastic fight, pushing the Bulls to six games. Leading that charge was Gary Payton, who took on the assignment of taking on the world's greatest player in that series, and Gary slowed down MJ like no one else could. Jordan averaged just 27 points that series on a notably inefficient 41.5% shooting. Sure, 27 points a game might seem like a lot, but the truth is, in every other NBA Finals Jordan was in, he averaged comfortably over 30 points per game while usually shooting above 50% from the field. I get that MJ still won the championship and was still the Finals MVP, but with that being said, no one has ever defended Michael Jordan on the biggest stage as well as Gary Payton did, and that's regardless of the fact that Gary is a couple inches shorter than Jordan. That's a testament to Gary's defense overall that season, as he was the 1996 Defensive Player of the Year. In all of NBA history, Gary Payton is the only point guard to ever win the Defensive Player of the Year award. Gary would also let you hear about it as he shut you down, as he's often recognized as one of the greatest trash talkers in NBA history. During Payton's best stretch of his career, from 1993 to 2003, he averaged 20.8 points, 7.9 assists, 4.5 rebounds, and 2.1 steals on 47% shooting from the field, while usually being the best defensive player on the floor. During that 10-year stretch, he was an all-star 9 out of those 10 years, and he was first-team all-defense 9 out of those 10 years, meaning that he was the best defender at his position for nearly a decade straight. His nine first-team all-defense selections is the most in NBA history, tied with three other players. It's also worth mentioning that load management was not a thing for Gary Payton. Despite the fact that he was often their leading scorer and facilitator while shutting down the opponent's best player just about every night, Payton still never took any voluntary breaks. In his 17-year career, he played in 1,335 games and only missed a grand total of 27 games due to injury. He was a flat-out baller, hard worker, and an Ironman of a player. 
It wasn't until the 2005-2006 season with the Miami Heat that Gary Payton finally secured that elusive championship as a part of the Shaq and Wade Miami Heat. Payton had reduced numbers at that point of his career, but people often forget that he was still a key contributing role player to that championship team. Now that his career is all said and done, Payton is 33rd on the NBA's all-time scoring list, with Jerry West, Allen Iverson, and Oscar Robertson being the only point guards ahead of him on that list. He's 9th all-time on the NBA's assist list, and he's 4th all-time in steals. So just how good was Gary Payton really? Well, honestly, it just depends on how much you value the defensive end of the floor, which is literally half of the game. Sure, Gary was pretty good on the offensive end at both scoring and facilitating, but in terms of defense, Peyton is easily the greatest point guard of all time on that end of the floor. Let me know in the comments section where you rank Gary Peyton among the greatest point guards of all time. Thanks for watching as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more NBA content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.